Hello, welcome. Uh, this is a video in which I'm going to show how to draw platonic solids. And I'm going to use some software called Blender, which is it's free, runs on every operating system. So don't be afraid to go ahead and uh, download it and install it and start it up. And when you start it up, you should get a screen that looks something like what you see right here. Um, now I'm running Blender on a Macintosh laptop and there's some user settings which I find useful. Let me show you what they are. Um, if I select file, user preferences, input, I would recommend if you're a laptop user that you make sure that you have emulate three button mouse checked because you probably don't have three button mouse and I would also check emulate numpad. And once you have those checked you can uh, click save user settings to make sure that they'll be there next time you start up Blender. Okay. Um, if you're new to Blender, um, maybe one of the first things you need to figure out is how to navigate. So we have a, um, a pointer, which I can move uh, with my trackpad. And if I click, I can move, uh, I can place the location of this little object right here, which is called the 3D pointer. Um, it's, um, yeah. And now if I uh, make a two finger gesture, I can orbit the center of the screen. So if I want to see the back of this cube here, I can use the orbit to do that. If I uh, hold down shift and I use the two fingers on the trackpad, I can pan. I can pan left or right, or I can pan up and down. And if I hold down control and use two fingers on the trackpad, I can zoom. Zoom in, zoom out. Great. So orbiting, panning, and zooming are the two main uh, ways to navigate. And that's probably all we'll use for this demo. The other thing we need to do is to be able to select objects. So this, this symbol off to the left is the camera. And if I right click on it, it's selected. I can tell because it's an orange. And if I want to select more than one object, I can hold shift and select the second object. And now the cube and the camera are both selected. I can hit A to unselect everything. And I can hit A again, select everything. And the third thing that got selected was light source. Um, let's hit a, a third time to unselect everything. Okay, I think that's about all we need for to know to, um, about selecting for this demo. Um, so let's get in and start creating platonic solids. Now, it might be that there'll already be a cube, which happens to be a platonic solid, uh, when you start Blender. Let's actually delete this cube so that we can see how a cube gets created. So I select the cube and in the outliner, I select it, and then I, in the right context menu, I choose delete, and it's gone. Okay, so to create a cube, I hit shift A, not A, but shift A, and in the uh, context menu, there is an option for cube, and that creates the cube. I created it um, at the location of the 3D cursor. I actually want it to be on top of this plane. So if I grab the, uh, one of the, uh, the arrows, the actually the blue arrow, that allows me to pull it up, and I can use the green arrow to slide it uh, in the y-axis direction. I can use the red arrow to slide it in the x-axis direction. There, okay, now it's nice and centered. Um, great, and so let's go ahead and show what the cube is gonna look like in the final picture. The final picture is not gonna have a lot of the symbols you see in front of you. It's not gonna have camera, it's not gonna have the symbol for the light source, it's not gonna have this grid that the cube is sitting on. Um, let me just show you what the final rendered picture looks like. To do that, I hit F12. And there is the final rendered image. And I can give the cube some color. Let's, let's do that. Um, on the right, if I click um, the Material tab here, and then I click New, um, I can give uh, a surface, uh, or uh, I can give a material to the surface. And I want to make it color, let me click on this white under the Diffuse tab, and I get a color wheel, and I can just make it say orange. Okay, good. So if I hit F12, there's what it looks like rendered. And also, I also want to make the background white. So if I go to the World tab and click on the horizon color, um, you can see it's gray, and I'm just going to make that white. Hit Escape and then render again. Okay, now I have an orange cube on a white background. Okay, good. So we got our first platonic solid. Uh, let's keep ch uh, chugging. So Shift A, and if I select Mesh Cone, Oops, and, uh, and I did not have my 3D cursor in a very good position, so let's um, grab these uh, arrows and 
move the cone closer in. And the cone has too many, oh shoot. Uh, where are the properties of the cone? Let me just delete that. And put the 3D cursor in the position where I want the cone to appear. Then hit Shift A again, mesh, cone, and there. And over here on the left, I have the properties of the cone. And I don't want to have 32 vertices. I only want to have three vertices, there. Okay, and if I want this to be regular, I need to change the depth to be the square root of two. So I'll do that. And the tetrahedron is a little small compared to the cube, but I can fix that. If I hit scale, um, and then I just uh, move my cursor to control the scale, and uh, that kind of looks good. Um, let's move it up so it's resting on the plane. Okay, good. And I can also give the, uh, the well, Let's change the name of the cone to tetrahedron. Sorry, difficulty typing. Okay, good. So I've named it tetrahedron, and let's change its color as well. So on the materials, choose a new material. And the diffuse, I get a color wheel, and let's make it yellow. Good. So great. There's what things look like when rendered. Um, okay. So the next, uh, let's position the 3D cursor over here. And if I hit Shift A, under Mesh, I can choose an icososphere. Okay, but that's not quite an icosahedron. I have, to ch I have to change the subdivisions to one. And there, I have an icosahedron. And I want everything to sort of just be lying flat um, on one of their faces. So um, we need to rotate the icosahedron. So let me just do that. I can hit R. There we go. And um, hit R again. Oops. Okay. Okay, and then I'm also going to translate it so it's on the plane. How does that look? Not perfect, but I think that's good enough uh, for our purposes. F12, and there we go. Um, let's see here. Okay, we can even scale it up just a little bit, make it a little bit bigger. Okay, one more render. All right, that doesn't look too bad. Um, okay, so next let's make an octahedron. And now things are getting a little bit uh, trickier. Um, we actually start with a cube to create an octahedron. So Shift A, cube. And there's the cube. And we're exploiting the fact that the octahedron is the dual of the cube. And if you don't know what the, of the dual is, just dual, uh, just Google uh, dual polyhedron. It'll explain it. Um, OK. So um, okay. So to convert a figure to its dual, we need to be in edit mode. We're currently in object mode, if you can see down here. But if I hit tab, we go into edit mode. And then I hit W, and I need to choose bevel. So look at that. You just need to move the cursor until you get an octahedron. And I don't need to be perfect, but uh, that's good enough. OK, so it's a little small. I'm going to scale it up. And I want to rotate it R, so that it is. Oops. How does that look? Okay, so, well, still not perfect. Let's move it up a little bit. And a little tricky here because, yeah. Okay, there we go. So now it's fairly flat, and we can change its color. Give it a, give it a material, and let's make it green. Okay, F12. Good. So we got uh, we got four of the platonic solids, and uh, now let's do the dodecahedron. Um, put it right there. And for the dodecahedron, we're going to use the fact that it's dual of the icosahedron. So we start with an icosahedron. Shift A, icosphere. And make sure there's only one subdivision. And um, I don't want the color to be green. I want it to be uh, blue. Oops. Shoot. Uh, let's undo. 
I think the problem was that I had the icosahedron selected when I created the new figure, and I didn't want that. So let's let's delete it and unselect everything. Um, place the 3D cursor and uh, get out of edit mode. Okay, so Shift A and uh, create an icosasphere, one subdivision. Okay, move it o o out a little bit. Okay, um, great. So now get back into edit mode with tab and hit W. Oops, W, bevel. And yeah, it's still working. Dump. Okay, and then just move the cursor until we have. This is actually going to be a little bit easier if we zoom in. So let me do that. W bevel. Okay, good. So that's a pretty good uh, dodecahedron. And we can change its color. Make it blue. And we can, uh, we can move it down. We can maybe scale it up just a little bit. Make it rest on the plane. And let's, I think it's still too small. Okay, so I like the sizes. I think I like the positions. Let's see how this looks in the final render. Okay, so things are not perfectly centered and a few things are off the screen. So we can fix that by, um, I guess by moving the camera. Let's zoom out. Happen there. Uh, Command Z, by way, by the way, is how you undo. Um, let's see. Okay, get out of edit mode, and select select camera, and just move it like you would anything else. Okay, let's see how that renders. Okay, um, now we could move the camera, at, and let's do that. This we can. Uh, Um, no, no, I think this is good enough for now. Um, you can rotate the camera and you can move the camera and get it into a better position. Um, so that say maybe the tetrahedron isn't um, as obscured as much as it is, or we could just maybe move the tetrahedron out a little bit. Okay, yeah. Um, Want to move the camera and not the, uh, the cube. Okay, I'm gonna call that my final uh, composition. Of course, you can continue to play with it because you know how to navigate, you know how to select the camera, you know how to move the uh, polyhedra. So we're gonna call that a wrap. That's it, that's how you create the platonic solids using Blender.